The launch pad service structures components have been lowered and the clamshell gantry service towers have been retracted in preparation for liftoff. And suit leak checks are now underway. Those begin around 3.03 a.m. Central Time. And uh, the emergency escape system has been armed. This escape tower would fire in the event of a problem during launch. The system is designed to pull the spacecraft and the crew clear of the booster and en enabling the Soyuz capsule to parachute to a safe landing in the event of an emergency during launch or the early stages of the climb to orbit. As we get closer to launch, we'll see several other events unfold. At four minutes prior to launch, the combustion chamber nitrogen purge begins. And then at T minus two, two minutes and 45 seconds, uh, booster propellant tank pressurization takes place. Events continue as the first umbilical tower separates at T minus 35 seconds. And the second umbilical tower separates at T minus 15 seconds. Then at T minus 12 seconds, the launch command is issued, culminating in launch of Soyuz spacecraft as the countdown clock reaches zero at 3.40 a.m. Central Time or 2.40 p.m. local time in Baikonur. Now 22 minutes away from today's launch, again coming up at 3.40 a.m. Central. During the Soyuz's climb to orbit, uh, tracking and telemetry from the Soyuz vehicle is downlinked to ground stations along the flight path and routed to the launch control blockhouse near the launch pad in Baikonur, and then to the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. The flight's then controlled from Baikonur until shutdown of the third stage engine when it is transitioned to the Russian Flight Control Center. During that climb to orbit, we'll see a number of activities take place. The first will be the first stage shutdown, which comes at uh, 1 minute and 58 seconds into flight. That's followed by the jettison of the shroud that covers the Soyuz at 2 minutes and 41 seconds. And then at 4 minutes and 47 seconds, we'll see the second stage shut down and its jettison. At 4 minutes and 57 seconds, 57 seconds, the third stage ignites, and then it lasts until the 8 minute and 45 second mark where it shuts down and the uh, spacecraft separates from the rocket. At that point we'll have preliminary orbital insertion at 8 minutes and 49 seconds into the flight, marking the point where the crew members will be in space. Seconds after Soyuz reaches orbit, the vehicle's command and control system will be activated. Stored computer commands will deploy navigation and communication antennas, and the solar arrays will be will be deployed to collect power for use by the onboard batteries to generate electricity for the Soyuz systems. The first antennas to be deployed will be the KERS rendezvous and docking antennas, which will be used to provide automatic range and rate of closure information on the final approach by the Soyuz for its docking with the POISK module. Immediately after reaching orbit, the crew will oversee the programmed activation sequence of a variety of systems just before the spacecraft passes out of range of Russian ground stations. Those systems include the spacecraft's power supply system, its radio communication system, and the critical motion control system. During the first orbit of the day's flight, the Soyuz will automatically execute the first two of several orbital adjustment burns planned as the vehicle fine-tunes its path to the International Space Station. Today's flight will mark the 10th of the Soyuz Modernized Systems, or MS, series of the vehicles, which is why this is called the Soyuz MS-10.
Soyuz rocket stands six, uh, 162 feet tall and weighs 680,000 pounds. It consists of the Soyuz MS-10 spacecraft inside a protective shroud at the top and the three-stage Soyuz FG booster below. The spacecraft was made into its booster and the three main stages were joined together last Wednesday. And then the entire rocket began its trek to the launch pad just after 7 a.m. Baikonur time on Tuesday, arriving less than two hours later where it was raised to its vertical position, as you see it here, for final pre-launch preparations. The spacecraft, with its three crew members on board, sits high above the three stages of the Soyuz booster, which uses kerosene and liquid oxygen as a propellant. The first stage has four liquid engines strapped to the side of the core vehicle. Each will burn for about one minute, 58 seconds, before they drop away. The core engine of the first stage also serves as the second stage and continues to burn until four minutes and 57 seconds into flight. Seeing here the animation of, uh, of launch, again, that uh, first uh, milestone is when the four liquid engines strapped to the side fall away. More lucky. That is the jettison of the shroud that uh, covers the Soyuz capsule itself, and here is the separation from uh, the second stage. The third stage has a single engine that ignites just before separation of the second stage and helps to push it away. It burns for 8 minutes and 45 seconds, and then uh, at that point, the Soyuz will have reached its preliminary orbit. The Soyuz MS-10 spacecraft is scheduled to dock to the orbiting complex later today. Four orbits after today's launch. Uh, that's uh, planned for 9.44 a.m. Central Time, and this is a one-day rendezvous that will culminate in that uh, same day docking for the first time in about a year. Once it does arrive, uh, Russian and American dignitaries, as well as guests and family members, will be watching the events unfold from a hotel not far from the launch site in Kazakhstan, offering them the chance to speak with uh, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin once they have arrived at the space station. Still continuing to see a live view of the Soyuz MS-10 on its launch pad in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, where Nick Haig and Alexei Ochinin are waiting for a launch, now just 12 minutes and 41 seconds away. The whole so Soyuz spacecraft is 23 and a half feet long and weighs 15,650 pounds. It's comprised of three modules. The descent module, situated in the middle of the Soyuz vehicle, contains customized seats, as you can see in this video, for the crew members to use during launch, entry, and landing. It also contains all the controls and displays necessary for the flight, as well as life support systems, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachutes and soft landing rocket engines that slow the Soyuz just before touchdown when it lands in Kazakhstan. There are eight hydrogen peroxide thrusters located on that module that are used to control the spacecraft's orientation or attitude during the descent until parachute deployment. And it also has guidance, navigation, and control system to maneuver the vehicle during the descent phase of the mission. 
The descent module weighs 6,393 pounds with a habitable volume of 141 cubic feet and approximately 110 pounds of cargo can be returned to Earth in this module. The descent module is the only portion of the Soyuz that re survives the return to Earth. Through a hatch, you can now see the orbital module, which is at the top of the Soyuz, connects to the descent module via that pressurized hatch. It's where the crew has a small amount of room to move around during the flight to the station. It has a volume of 230 cubic feet with a docking mechanism hatch and rendezvous antennas located at the front end. The docking mechanism is used to dock to the space station and the hatch allows entry into the orbiting complex. The rendezvous antennas are used by the automated docking system, which uses radar, to maneuver toward the space station for docking. There's also a forward-looking window in the module that the crew can use to take manual measurements of distance and closing speed with a laser rangefinder in the event of a failure with a rendezvous radar system. The propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, the main engine, and the attitude control, control thrusters, avionics, and communications and control equipment. The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft mission. Five minutes readiness is Before they are deployed, the two solar arrays that uh, are included on the space station, or on the Soyuz uh, vehicle, are folded up against the body of the propulsion module, which then separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn, along with the orbital module. Solar panels span almost 35 feet. The entire spacecraft serves not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the event of the crew needing to leave the space station unexpectedly. We are watching you, uh, we are seeing you on uh, camera number one. A group of NASA representatives is there in Baikonur, just a short distance away from the launch pad. And for an update on the activities there, we're going to go now to NASA Public Affairs Officer Rob Navius. Brandy, it's a mild afternoon here in the Central Asian desert as a new crew prepares to begin a six-hour journey to the International Space Station for the start of a six-month mission. Just one week after a trio of space station residents landed northeast of the Baikonur Cosmodrome, two new residents are poised to replace them. U.S. and Russian space officials and a large gathering of family and friends are here at the Cosmodrome for this launch, which has a senior management flavor. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine is here for the first time, taking in a Soyuz launch after a tour of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia, earlier in the week. Bridenstine and Roscosmos said Dmitry Rogozin have met face-to-face, -face, expressing support for continuing international cooperation in space. After launch, we'll stay put here in Baikonur to monitor the four-orbit fast-track rendezvous and docking some six hours from now, and a couple of hours after that, the hatch opening and the welcoming ceremony between the arriving crew and the trio on board the complex. Today's launch comes less than six weeks before the 20th anniversary of the launching of the Zarya module atop a proton rocket just a few miles from this Soyuz launch site of the Cosmodrome, a milestone in human spaceflight history that marked the birth of the International Space Station. That's it from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Now back to you at Mission Control in Houston. Thanks, Rob. Now back with a live view inside the Soyuz capsule where the crew on board is readying in the final min minutes of uh, their time on Earth before launch today at 3.40 a.m. Central Time, just uh, seven minutes away now. You can see here N Nick Haig at the top of the screen and Alexei Ovchinin at the bottom. At this point in the countdown, seven minutes away from launch, uh, the pre-launch operations are complete and the Soyuz first and second stage engines are ready for launch. Also, telemetry has been received from the rocket indicating that all primary and backup systems are ready for launch. 
At the time of launch, again, which is coming up at 3.40 a.m. Central Time, the space station is going to be over northeast Kazakhstan near the Russian border, moving from southwest to northeast with an altitude of about 254 miles above the Earth. It will be about 948 miles in front of the Soyuz. Launch is precisely timed for the moment when the Earth's rotation will place the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the plane of the orbit of the International Space Station. And I will provide the report of the launch. This is Burlak 1. I copy. We are ready for launch. Now under six minutes away from launch. At this point, the launch key has been inserted in the launch bunker, and it is a real key. It transitions the launch from sequence into automatic mode. Launch key inserted. Now less than five minutes away from today's launch. At this point, onboard systems will be switched to onboard control and the commander's cockpit displays and controls will be activated. The crew members are closing their helmets now and uh, putting their suit, uh, which will put their suits on oxygen. Run one command, ground measurement system is activated. Combustion chamber nitrogen purge. Fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines are purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. Now T minus three minutes and 55 seconds. This is Burlak 1. I copy loud and clear. It's great. Copy. Getting OK signs and thumbs up from the crew on board this Soyuz there. Uh, Nick Hang and Alexei Ovchinin now three and a half minutes away from today's launch. This will be the first time for Nick Hang to visit the International Space Station and the second for Alexei Ovchinin. Run two command. On board measurement system is activated. Ground fuel and oxidizer nitrogen terminated. This is Burlak. One, three minutes before the liftoff. Everything is well on board. Uh, we are feeling well. Thank you. Copy. Two minutes and 45 seconds away from launch of the booster tank. We pressurize for flight. This optimizes the flow of fuel and helps add structural, structural support to the rocket. Booster propellant tank pressurization initiated. And that call indicating that the pressurization has uh, started for the booster tank, again, optimizing the flow of fuel.
One minute and uh, 15 seconds now into launch. The ground propellant feed has now been terminated. Yes, it's better now, guys. Thank you. And now just one minute to one go. Minute Soyuz is now on internal power. We may see just a minute or so of uh, in-cabin views, but then we'll switch to external views of the Soyuz during today's flight. Vehicle to internal power. First umbilical tower there uh, separating from the booster. Thirty seconds now until launch. Ground umbilical to the third stage has been disconnected, and in just a moment, the second umbilical tower will separate. Power on board. There's the second tower. Command for ignition, oxygen. Launch command has been issued. Seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. Engine turbo pump at flight speed. Engine at maximum thrust. Lift off. And there is lift off of the Soyuz MS-10 to the International Space Station, carrying Nick Haig and Alexei Obchinin to the orbital complex. This again is Nick Haig's first time to uh, launch to space, and Alexei Obchinin's second. Hearing good first stage performance for the Soyuz, delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. Again, the first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It's burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. Sixty seconds into the flight. The pressure in the chamber is nominal. Lock one, copy. Uh, everything is well on board. They're feeling well. Thank you. Copy. Everything proceeding as uh, intended for today's flight. Now just a little over a minute into it. The velocity of the Soyuz is about 1,100 miles per hour. View here of the crew inside the Soyuz now making their way to the International Space Station. Nick Haig there at the top of the screen and Alexei Ochinin at the bottom. View here of the Soyuz making its way into space. Everything looking good, proceeding nominally. And we have the escape tower for the Soyuz now jettisoned. Everything continuing nominally. The four strap on boosters have been jettisoned and they've completed their job, dropped away at an altitude of 28 statute miles. Soyuz traveling about 3,000, uh, 3,350 miles an hour. Is it emergency booster two minutes, 45 seconds, the uh, emergency, the failure of the booster? Failure of the booster. BS, yes, BS. Separation. Enable power. <laughs> 190 seconds into the flight, so he's traveling in, in about 4,700 miles uh, per hour. Don't be in a hurry. Burlaki, copy. We are in uh, weightlessness, you know, according to our sensations. 
сейчас один момент. Стэнд бай. Да, Ник. Да, выбери. Бурлаки, do you have F1 illuminated? 11.42.17 Failure 11.42.17 is the time of the failure F1 on SP is illuminated Copy Key the shroud is separated The screw is feeling well Everything is well on board We have crew uh, in our hands and the power is on. Copy. So what are the recommendations of the ground? What about the separation? Did the separation go through? Yes, it did. 11.42.55. For like him. Did you deactivate root power? No, uh, did you activate the root power? Yes, the root power is on, O-N. Now, please send the S command. Ballistic uh, descent command is sent from root controller. Copy. 11.45.30. The S has been sent. We have the indicator illuminated. The overload has started. Yes, we are getting ready for the deload. Time 12.46, deload is 6.7. Copy. We feeling rotation. The G load is going down. 1846.20. G load is 272 and going down. Copy, Burlakim. So tighten the strap in work. Hearing there that uh, there has been uh, an issue with the booster, and we're standing by for information as we continue to get it from the Russian flight control team. But everything seems to be fine with the crew. We had good calm with them, and they are okay. We'll continue to wait for more information. Let's go to page 32. Three, two. Бурлаки, launch lead. Бурлаки лонч лид. Team here in Mission Control is working with their counterparts in Russia, getting more information on the uh, issue with the booster that uh, has changed today's launch plan. Um, 
we're getting more information, which we will provide as, as soon as we have a little bit more, but uh, you're seeing a live view of the control team working here, led by Flight Director Mary Lawrence. Would like you launch, please. Border like you launch lead. Like you launch late. Border like you launch late.
continuing to see here a live view from the Mission Control Center here in Houston where the team was following along with today's Soyuz MS-10 launch. Uh, that launch did have a problem with the, the booster a few seconds after the first stage separation. And uh, we can confirm now that the crew ha has started to go into the ballistic descent mode. They'll be going in on a sharp landing today. I think uh, it'll be coming up uh, fairly shortly. Uh, and we're continuing to get more information from our counterparts at the Roscosmos Space Agency as we uh, learn more about today's uh, activities and what, what to expect next as the crew does go through this ballistic descent mode. Confirming again that the uh, today's Soyuz MS-10 launch did go into a ballistic re-entry mode a little bit after its launch uh, around 3.47 a.m. Central Time. That means the crew will not be going to the International Space Station today. Instead, they will be uh, taking a uh, sharp uh, landing coming back to Earth. Search and rescue crews are always uh, pre-staged in the event that something like this does happen and the uh, search and rescue teams will be getting ready to, to find them as we, as we find out more about uh, where the Soyuz caps will be landing and uh, when we might expect to hear more.
team here in Mission Control continuing to uh, work with their counterparts in Moscow, getting more information on the uh, contingency that uh, interrupted today's inter uh, launch to the International Space Station of the Soyuz MS-10. They did have a problem with a booster not long after launch that led the Soyuz to go into what's called a ballistic descent mode, uh, bringing it home back to Earth early. Uh, the search and rescue teams are already in the air. They uh, took off at about 3.55 a.m. Central Time, and we expect it to take about an hour and a half for them to reach the location where the Soyuz, ex Soyuz is now expected to touch down. We'll continue for uh, more information as it's available. You can uh, stay tuned here for, for continuing updates. Once again, we did have a interruption in today's launch, which took place on schedule at 3.40 a.m. Central Time, but a few minutes after after that launch, uh, we heard the Russian flight control team report uh, an issue with the booster that led to a ballistic descent landing for the crew on board, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin. Search and rescue teams have already uh, launched in helicopters to begin heading out to the area that they are expected to land in. It will take them about an hour and a half to reach that area, however. In the meantime, the team here in Mission Control is continuing to work with their counterparts in Russia and to gather more information.
team here in Mission Control Houston continuing to uh, work with their Moscow counterparts, get information on today's launch, which should go into a contingency mode a few minutes after 3.40 a.m. Central Time liftoff. Uh, team in uh, Moscow reported a, an issue with a booster that uh, led into a ballistic descent mode for the Soyuz capsule. That means it returned to Earth at a, at a sharp ang sharper angle than we would normally look to uh, land via, but uh, that is one of the one of the uh, ways that the one of the modes that is available for an emergency landing if necessary. Uh, we did hear that the helicopters uh, for the search and rescue team are already in the air. They took off at about 3.55 a.m. Central Time, and it will take them about an hour and a half to get to the region where the uh, capsule was expected to land. Uh, we're waiting more information from our counterparts in Moscow, but as soon as we have that, we will pass that on here on NASA TV, and uh, you can stay tuned for continuing updates.
This is Mission Control Houston, continuing to see a live view here of the International Space Station Flight Control Team uh, with uh, Flight Director Mary Lawrence leading it. Uh, have gotten an update from the uh, our counterparts in Moscow, the, uh, reporting that the uh, search and rescue teams are in contact with the crew on board Soyuz MS-10, uh, NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin. Uh, they have landed uh, in a ballistic landing uh, following today's launch a little east of Jessica's gone and uh, reporting that uh, the crew is con is in communications with the rescue forces and are in good condition. We'll report more as we hear it, but once again, we are in communication with the crew at this point and are hearing that they are in good condition. The International Space Station crew members on board on orbit uh, have been notified of today's uh, launch contingency and uh, that the that they, that we are in in contact with the crew uh, we'll be continuing to wait more information from our Russian counterparts and we'll pass that along as we receive it this morning but once again uh, we are told now that uh, the rescue forces are in communication with the Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin and we're hearing that they're in good condition Just to repeat the update we gave a few moments ago, we wanted to uh, say again that uh, the Soyuz MS-10 crew, NASA astronaut Nick Hang and uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin have been in contact now with the rescue forces that are on their way to the landing site that the Soyuz uh, came down at. Uh, that uh, was a little east of Jessica's gone. They uh, landed after a contingency with today's launch which took place at 3:40 a.m. central time a few a few minutes after uh, after that launch occurred we did hear from uh, our russian counterparts that there was an issue with the uh, booster aboard the soyuz that led to the contingency which uh, meant that the soyuz came back in a ballistic descent mode uh, they have again now landed about 20 uh, kilometers east of jessica's gone and uh, we are now hearing that they're in communication with the rescue forces on their way to the capsule and that they're in good condition.
it's Michigan Trail Houston, the uh, rescue, search and rescue forces who uh, took off at uh, 3.55 a.m. Central Time from Baikonur, uh, expected to reach the area where uh, the Soyuz MS-10 descended uh, at about an hour and a half later, so about 30 minutes into that flight. Uh, we are hearing already that the forces are in contact with uh, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin on board the Soyuz, and uh, initial reports are that they are in good condition. Uh, we will stand by for more, but again, they expected to take about an hour and a half to reach the region where the Soyuz landed east of Jessica's Gun, following a bal ballistic descent landing that took place after an issue with today's 3.40 a.m. Central Time launch. The ballistic descent does mean that the uh, Soyuz module comes in uh, more steeply than it would on a normal landing trajectory, which means that the crew is uh, subjected to higher G-forces during the descent, but it is uh, a, known, uh, a known mode of uh, descent that uh, crew members have gone through before. Again, uh, that took place uh, following today's 3.40 a.m. Central Time launch of the Soyuz MS-10. And uh, the crew on board, Nick Haig and Alexei Ochinin, have been in contact with the rescue forces, which are on their way to the landing site. Uh, expected to reach it probably uh, uh, still about an hour from now.
This is Mission Control Houston. You're continuing to see a live view inside the Mission Control uh, the International Space Station flight control room where the uh, flight controllers on console led by Flight Director Mary Lawrence are continuing to work with their counterpart counterparts in Moscow to get more information about the ballistic landing that followed today's 3.40 a.m. Central Time launch. A few minutes after that launch, uh, the team in Moscow did report an issue with a booster that led to the ballistic landing. Ballistic uh, l descent mode means that the Soyuz capsule comes in at a sharper angle than it would on a normal landing, but that is one of the uh, modes that we're familiar with. Uh, and we have heard now from the crew on board, uh, NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin. They're in communications with the rescue forces, and uh, we're hearing that they are in good condition. The rescue forces are in the midst of making their way to that landing site, uh, which was east of Jeskizgan. They've been in the air since on uh, via helicopter since 3.55 a.m. Central Time. And uh, it is about an hour and a half uh, journey from uh, Baikonur where those search and rescue forces are pre-staged for every launch to the, the uh, landing site where they'll be able to get in touch with uh, or, or see for themselves uh, the, the Soyuz capsule and crew.
This and this is Mission Control Houston, still seeing the live view from the International Space Station Flight Control Room, where Flight Director Mary Lawrence is on console leading the team today. They are uh, still uh, working with their counterparts in Moscow to get more information on uh, the uh, launch contingency today and the recovery operations that are underway to uh, reach the, the crew uh, on board Soyuz MS. 10 uh, launched today at 3.40 a.m. Central Time and then experienced uh, an issue with a booster shortly after that launch that led to the crew landing in ballistic mode a little east of Jessica's gone. The recovery forces are in contact with the crew and first, first reports are that they are in good condition. Uh, we're waiting to hear more and while they, uh, while they are standing by for more information, the team is also getting ready uh, for to to pre prepare for the International Space Station crew members' um, upcoming day, the uh, crew members on board the International Space Station are Serena Onan Chancellor Alexander Gerst of uh, the European Space Agency ESA and uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev. They're all uh, on board the International Space Station and had planned to welcome the new crew members Nick Nick, Nick Hague and Alexei Ovchinin to the space station today, uh, but the team here on the ground will be replanning some of their activities as they uh, as they go forward. Again, we are in contact with the crew, or rather the search and rescue forces in, Rush in Kazakhstan are in contact with the Soyuz crew members, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin. Uh, they took off uh, from the Baikonur area where the search and rescue forces are always pre-staged at 3.55 a.m. Central Time, a little less than an hour for hour ago and uh, expected to take about an hour and a half to reach the landing site. But they are again in, con in contact with uh, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin and uh, first uh, reports were that the crew was in good condition.
This is Michigan Control Houston. We're still seeing a live view of the International Space Station flight control room where the flight controllers are on console uh, working with their Moscow counterparts to get more information on today's uh, launch contingency. Launch took place at 3.40 a.m. as scheduled, but uh, experienced an issue with a booster shortly after liftoff that led the Soyuz MS-10 to uh, go into a ballistic descent mode. That's a, a sharper landing than we would uh, normally see, but uh, it does mean that the, the crew experiences higher G-force loads as they uh, return to Earth, but uh, is a landing mode that we're familiar with and have seen before. Crew did land. Uh, in uh, a, a little east of Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan. And the search and recovery teams are on their way to them. They uh, took off in the helicopters from the Baikonur area at 3.55 a.m. Central Time, so they've been in the air about an hour now. Expected to take about an hour and a half to reach the crew, but in the meantime, they have been in contact with the crew and have heard that they are in good conditions. Uh, we're standing by for more information as it's available, and we'll continue to give you updates as we receive them. Uh, in the meantime, we have heard that now that the uh, Roscosmos Space Agency is forming a state commission to investigate the incident already. Uh, however, we do not expect a press conference from Mission Control Moscow to take place today. Again, uh, the Roscosmos is forming a state commission to investigate today's uh, launch incident, but uh, they will not be holding a press conference today. Again, we'll stay on the air and give you updates as they uh, come to us, but again, uh, the search and rescue teams are in contact with astronaut Nick Haig and cosmonaut Alexei Ochinin. They landed in their Soyuz MS-10 uh, east of Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan, uh, a little after nine today, and uh, the search and rescue teams are on their way to that landing site to uh, to uh, to recover the crew and and um, begin getting them back to uh, to Baikonur.
This is Mission Control Houston, still seeing a view here of the International Space Station flight control team working uh, here uh, from Houston with their co counterparts in Moscow to get continuing information on today's uh, launch contingency, which uh, led to astronaut Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin uh, landing east of Jessica's gone. We are now hearing reports from the search and recovery team that they have uh, reached the landing site and the crew is actually out of the cap capsule. Again, uh, the search and recovery team that left from Baikonur has reached the landing site and the crew is out of the capsule. Uh, from here, uh, the teams will be working to get them ready to uh, return to Moscow and we will be continuing to provide updates as they are available. But once again, the crew uh, reported in good condition. They're out of the Soyuz capsule, which landed east of Jessica's gone after uh, an issue with today's launch. That launch took place at 3.40 a.m. Central Time as scheduled, but uh, experienced an issue with a booster shortly afterward that led to the Soyuz going through ballistic landing. That landing resulted the, with the Soyuz Touching down east of Jessica's gone. Crew inside again in good condition and now out of the capsule. Search and recovery teams are with them and uh, and uh, working to, to get them ready to leave.
This is Mission Control Houston. Repeating an update that we uh, mentioned earlier, the uh, search and recovery teams that left Baikonur at 3.55 a.m. Central Time reported that they have reached the crew now and the crew is out of the capsule. All reports so far that they are in con good condition and uh, we'll be working to get them ready to leave the landing site. Again, the search and recovery team has reached the Soyuz MS-10 and astronaut Nick Haig and cosmonaut Alexey Ovchinin. They landed east of Jess's gone following a ballistic descent after an issue with their launch, which took place at 3.40 a.m. Central Time this morning. Teams here in Mission Control are still working to with their uh, counterparts in Moscow to get more information, and we'll continue to update you as we receive more information on the crew and their status. But again, the search and recovery team has reached their landing site east of Jesk's gone Kazakhstan. The crew members are out of the capsule, and uh, all reports so far that they are in good condition. Meanwhile, Roscosmos has formed a state commission to investigate this morning's incident. We don't express, expect a press conference to take place from uh, Moscow today, but again, we'll continue to update you here on NASA TV with information as it becomes available.
This is Mission Control Houston. You're continuing to see a live view inside the International Space Station flight control room as the uh, team here in Mission Control works uh, with their counterparts in Moscow to get more information on today's contingent landing of the MS, uh, Soyuz MS-10. The crew on board, uh, astronaut uh, Nick Haig of, Haig of NASA and uh, cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin of Roscosmos uh, are both uh, on the ground and uh, search and recovery teams have reached them at their landing site east of Jessica's gone. Uh, they are reported to be in good condition and they have been extracted or taken out of the Soyuz capsule. That means they'll be getting ready to return to Moscow and uh, the, teams, uh, the search and recovery teams will be, be making preparations for that. Meanwhile, the uh, Roscosmos has, uh, has reported they're forming a state commission to investigate the incident. Uh, we don't expect a press conference from them today, but we'll be continuing to give you reports here on NASA TV as they become available. The launch of the Soyuz MS-10 took place as planned at 3.40 a.m. Central Time this morning, but shortly after landing, the, uh, cause the flight controllers in, in Moscow reported that there was an issue with a booster that led to the capsule going into a ballistic descent mode. That means it comes in at a sharper angle to land than we normally land at, and that uh, means that the crew inside experiences higher G-force loads as they go through the landing. That is a landing mode that we've seen before, however. And they were able to land uh, east of Jessica's gone. The search and recovery teams that are always pre-staged uh, were able to get helicopters in the air to reach them and uh, have since done so. Again, uh, they've reached the crew members, have them out of the Soyuz capsule, and uh, so far our reports are that they are in good condition. Again, we'll bring you more updates as they become available here on NASA TV.
This is Mission Control Houston. Teams here in uh, the International Space Station flight control room still uh, working to get more information on today's unexpected landing of the MS-10 Soyuz vehicle after its launch at 3.40 a.m. Central Time. Shortly after its launch, it experienced a problem with a booster that uh, led to it going into a ballistic descent mode and bringing the crew on board, astronaut Nick Haig and cosmonaut uh, Olev Alexei Ovchinin uh, to a landing site east of Jesk has gone earlier this morning. Search and recovery teams were sent out from the Baikonur area to uh, to make contact with the crew, and they have since done so and have gotten them out of the Soyuz capsule. All reports so far that the crew is in good condition, and uh, the team there will be working to uh, get them uh, traveling away from the from that landing site and uh, returning to Baikonur. Again, uh, the search and recovery teams have made contact with Alexei Ovchinin and Nick Haig at the landing site east of Jessica's Gone, where the Soyuz MS-10 touched down and are working to get them uh, ready to travel uh, back to Baikonur.
This is Miss Mission Control Houston uh, continuing to give updates as we receive them about the uh, launch and subsequent ballistic landing of the MS-10 vehicle with NASA astronaut N Nick Haig and uh, Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin. Uh, that launch occurred at 3.40 a.m. Central Time and, uh, as I said, uh, shortly had an issue with a booster that led to a ballistic landing east of Jessica's gone. The search and recovery team uh, has reached the capsule with the crew members inside and has already gotten them out. Everybody is reported so far to be in good condition and the recovery team is working to begin getting them ready to leave the landing site. Again, all reports so far that uh, Nick Haig and Alexei Ovchinin are in good condition uh, at that landing site east of Jessica's gone where their Soyuz MS-10 uh, touched down after a uh, problem with their launch this morning. Uh, NASA Administrator uh, Jim Bridenstine was actually at the launch in Baikonur and has sent an, an, a statement out via his Twitter account. Uh, he says that uh, NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin are in good condition following today's aborted launch. I'm grateful that everyone is safe and a thorough investigation into the cause of the incident will be conducted. That again is a tweet uh, sent out as a status update uh, from NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein. And as he mentioned, Roscosmos is already forming a state commission to investigate the incident. We'll be hearing, uh, reporting more information as we get it here on NASA TV.